Okay. I'm going to go ahead and start sharing to um, Facebook. So and it'll Annie, I, will you, you will do the slides for me, right? You were on the yes, slide. Before. Absolutely. And just let me know like verbal cues when you want me to switch to the next slide. Thank you. So I think we can go ahead and get started. Um, welcome all to those who are still joining us and to those who are joining us um, live online. We are so glad to have you here. My name is Angie Dahmer and I am the Exchange Program Manager with the World Affairs Council of Kentucky and Southern Indiana. Um, the World Affairs Council of Kentucky and Southern Indiana delivers opportunities for the local community here in Kentucky to connect with global leaders and engage with peers on international issues. Through our unique lineup of international programs, WAC Kentucky is the regional hub for international exchange, dialogue, and learning. And we are so grateful today to be joined by Christiane Holsinger and Jessica Morgan. Um, and before we begin, I will go ahead and just introduce them both briefly. So Jessica Morgan serves as the Development Director of Louisville Tourism. Her primary areas of focus include leading the Certified Tourism Ambassador Program, international sales, and multicultural marketing development efforts. As a Louisville native, Morgan graduated from Florida Gulf Coast University with a degree in communications and has spent 20 years in the hospitality industry with beginnings in hotels and various roles from the front to the back of the house. She has previous convention and visitor bureau experience at the Lee County Visitor and Convention Bureau, followed by the Bradenton area. These two destinations are focused on leisure marketing domestically and abroad. Morgan has also served as the Vice President of Industry Relations for US Travel Association in Washington, DC, working to combat negative perceptions facing business travel after the 2008 recession. And we are so happy to have her in Louisville uh, now. And Christiane Holzinger is an alumna of our IVLP program. She visited Louisville in 2020 as part of the economic development cohort through the US Department of State's IVLP program. During her visit to Louisville, tourism was a topic that interested her. She holds many important titles in Austria, including the regional chairperson of a subsidiary of Austria's economic chamber and lobbying organization for young business leaders. She also serves as the CEO of two companies, Startup Stars and 360 Business Planner. Apart from these occupations, Ms. Holzinger also sits on the supervisory board of the state communal real estate company and is very involved with her local chamber of commerce. Um, 
Christiane earned her MBA from the University of Klagenfurt in 2007 and holds dual certificates in digital consulting and export strategy from the Austrian Chamber of Commerce. Fluent in three languages, Christiane has traveled and studied abroad extensively. So thank you both for, so much for joining us here today. And without further ado, um, I will share Christiane's presentation about um, what her role is and uh, tourism in Austria. And yes. Thank you very much, Andy, uh, for the very nice introduction. Um, um, may we switch to the first slide? So uh, to give you a little bit of um, input on uh, me as a person right now, I am um, since in the third year um, in the role, I'm a federal chairwoman of the junior chamber in Austria, which has a member base of 120,000 young entrepreneurs under 40. And uh, maybe Andy, you can switch to the next slide. So I can uh, give you a little bit of um, introduction uh, to me as a person. Um, as Andy said, I did study um, in several countries. Um, I did uh, concentrate my studies on international business, international taxes and marketing. I uh, had the chance to study in the United States, in Australia, in France, and uh, finished my studies in Austria. I always focused on the business topic and due to my uh, personal uh, passion to travel, um, I have been uh, very involved in um, international topics. And therefore, um, in my tax consultancy agency, which I opened more than 10 years ago, we focused on international clients. Due to uh, Brexit and also um, uh, the uh, um, several events in the last year, we have a lot of clients from the United States and uh, Canada, uh, Australia, and also, um, of course, Great Britain that uh, recently moved to Austria. Therefore, we, I have a very strong cross-cultural context. Furthermore, um, I have been, I spent a couple of weeks in the last years in the United States to get more input in my role as a, a social impact investor and business angel. Um, as a federal chairwoman, I have been lobbying, of course, um, the, the topics for young entrepreneurs and founders uh, to ease in the founding process generally in Austria. And I have been on the task force for COVID, uh, national COVID support uh, with our Ministry of Finance. So I'm, I'm one of the um, task force members that actually works just recently to support businesses in Austria. As a uh, national president for Junior Chamber International, um, I have been um, um, working very closely um, also with uh, the United States and um, also uh, the, the chance to visit um, the United States with the IVPL program um, opened my mindset differently, although I've traveled the U.S. before a lot, but the focus on, on um, commerce and, and, and also um, the economy and uh, tourism um, opened my view on how to develop my region. Um, as Andy said, I'm also a um, uh, local president of the uh, Chamber of Commerce in my region, hometown Klagenfurt, where tourism is, of course, a, a major topic. Um, actually, exactly a year ago, I spent five days in Louisville. I enjoyed it a lot. Um, to me, what was really surprising is the combination of um, food and drinks, the, the, uh, the kitchen and, 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 and the whole culinary um, experiences that we had were extraordinary. I enjoyed a lot the discussions that we had on tourism and uh, not only around Louisville, but generally in Kentucky. And I learned that there are a lot of parallels also compared with um, um, uh, Carinthia, the region where I live in. Um, so my background has always been strategic support, not only for the Chamber of Commerce, but of course of my entrepreneurs. Um, next slide, please, Andy. So my expertise is, um, yeah, well, uh, during the last um, 10 years, I have been an entrepreneur for several um, different companies. 
I have supported especially female founders um, across the globe. I introduced in 2017 the first global social entrepreneurship challenge because I wanted to combine sustainability goals with entrepreneurship. To me, um, I'm a huge fan of sustainable projects. Therefore, we introduced in our region a lot of slow food projects. And that interesting to me, I, I found a lot of entrepreneurs that focus that way also with the bourbon tourism to combine it with um, excellent food and food quality. So that's something what we have in common. Um, generally speaking, I have been uh, caught up in the last year, of course, with COVID topics, supporting uh, entrepreneurs, helping them survive, um, not physically, but, uh, you know, in terms of how do I keep my business alive and um, um, uh, cross-cultural exchange has been very important to me to learn from other nations and also from other leaders uh, what uh, kind of expertise um, do we have. And of course, I have been focusing on digital bookkeeping um, already 10 years ago. Um, it was not about the digitalization, it was more or less to save the trees because in Austria we were obliged to have like everything in paper and I didn't like that so um, we were one of the winners last year because we could serve our clients uh, without any um, uh, physical interaction. So uh, that's my background. Um, uh, next slide please. Uh, what we do generally uh, is um, I do help founders, startups and uh, companies to get funded and, and uh, uh, financial support. And we do that on an international basis because, of course, you can imagine uh, Austria is a very small country. Um, we tend to bring our people um, uh, on a global approach. I did learn a lot in the last 10 to 12 years from the United States, from Business Angel about risk capital on uh, how we invest. And that's uh, what I do uh, like to bring back in the startup boot camps that we organize in Austria. Next slide, please. So um, I live in a very small country. This is just something that I would like to share with you in terms of tourism for Austria. Actually, whenever I visited Aust uh, uh, the United States as an Austrian, everybody was talking to me about the movie Sound of Music. Uh, which is much more known, I guess, in the United States than in Austria. Um, uh, generally, um, here are some cliches what we are um, in terms of tourism, uh, what people know about us. So um, the capital of Austria is Vienna. We are really basically in, in the middle of, of Europe, so in the heart of Europe. Um, we do like traditional costumes, but we don't wear them every day. Not every Austrian knows how to yodel. Um, that's some, some regional parts that uh, know how to yodel. It's not, not every part. Um, Carinthia um, is in the very south, very close to the Italian and Slovenian border. It's called uh, the Alps Adriatic uh, area. So we drive uh, three hours to Vienna and one and a half hours to the sea. But um, generally uh, we have um, uh, access to the mountains to go skiing, climbing or whatsoever in the next 30 to 50 minutes that's around us. That's why I moved back from Vienna to Carinthia. And um, in, in Carinthia, we do speak a lot about sustainability in tourism. Uh, tourism is in Austria generally a very huge topic. Imagine in Austria, um, tourism makes more than 15% of the gross domestic, uh, gross domestic product. Uh, therefore, this is um, a, a very high um, amount in generally in, in comparison in the um, European Union. So uh, we are a country that focuses a lot on hospitality and therefore wherever I travel, um, I'd like to have um, an insight on the tourism strategy. And um, what I have been implementing in the last three years in my region is um, a project that is, um, we focus on digital nomads. So uh, we actually um, um, share this idea um, all over Europe and we provide a platform in my hometown where you can actually book not only your workspace, your long-term stay, but also you can join a real network. And that comes from my position in the junior chamber that we like to connect people. So whenever you would like to have a combination of tourism and work, so um, we say it's, it's a kind of work 
um, balance um, that we show. So you are able to spend your holidays in Carinthia, but combine it with, with work, or you spend your work here in Carinthia and combine it with uh, tourism and pleasure time. In summer, we focus on our lakes, which are very well known all over Europe. Um, uh, the mountains, hiking, biking in winter, it's of course, it's ski tourism uh, and um, also um, uh, ice climbing. And due to the fact that we are um, very close to the sea, we have a lot of international uh, um, visitors as well. Main tourists is um, the, the local, um, uh, the, the um, not only the Austrians that um, spend the vacation with us, but also generally speaking, the guest is uh, from within Europe. Um, and I guess we speak a little bit more on our impact on tourism uh, once Andy and uh, Jessica and me join the discussion. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Christiane, um, for that wonderful overview. And now I will turn it over to Jessica to give us a bit of an overview about Louisville tourism and her role. Great, thank you, Andy. Let me just do the screen share here, just one second. Are we all good? Thank you, Andy. Um, well, good afternoon, everyone, and good evening, Christiane. I know it's um, dinner time there, so I'm so glad you're here joining us for this conversation. It's a pleasure to be here with you all today, and thank you to the World Affairs Council for hosting this event and this conversation. Um, my name is Jessica Morgan, and I am the Director of Tourism Development for Louisville Tourism. We are the official destination marketing organization for the city of Louisville. Our department and team within Louisville Tourism is dedicated to selling Louisville as a leisure travel destination and servicing visitors from across the spectrum, domestic and internationally. So our topic of conversation today is uh, centers around the tourism industry and how the pandemic has affected the industry that I love so much. Um, I, I also too, I know we're gonna be getting into the discussion of how this industry has had to pivot and cope with the restrictions that have followed with COVID. If I could give you a brief overview of how we sell Louisville as a destination, as a marketing destination organization. Louisville is a city that embodies icons such as Muhammad Ali and Louisville Slugger and those fabulous three-year-old thoroughbreds that begin their quest for the crown at the longest running consecutive sporting event in America, the Kentucky Derby. Also, the bourbon culinary scene, as Christiane mentioned, has put us on the map to greet 19 million convention delegates and leisure travelers annually, with visitor traffic driving a large part of the city's economic development through tourism. Increased outside spending in our community sustains and creates jobs and raises the quality of life for those living in our great city. As the city's primary destination marketing organization, global tourism looks for smart and innovative ways to be more inclusive and bring more visitors here to experience everything the Bourbon City has to offer. A few of our wonderful accolades about our great city. As we set the stage for how drastic of a year our city of Louisville has faced, I'd like to take you back to 2019 and heading into 2020. Louisville on, as a destination was on a positive trajectory. Following a record decade expansion, nearly entire hospitality infrastructure had been transformed, especially in the past three years, as a renovated and expanded downtown convention center spurred the simultaneous development and, and newly renovated hotel projects and investment by private industry in the city's primary visitor corridor and beyond. A new tourism market built around the spirit related travel highlighting a signature Kentucky industry while also growing new audiences to the city's other heritage attractions that had been delivering 19 million annual visitors. Neighborhoods also offering authentic experiences including local dining and lodging had become vital assets to attracting new visitors and driving new adventure driven millennials. Louisville had a convention packed 2020 calendar and a leisure events expecting to bring over $3.5 billion in economic impact to the city, supporting nearly 60,000 hospitality jobs. I joined the organization towards the end of 2019 and we were setting our sights on expanding our leisure outreach strategy to increase our inbound international visitation and looking at our top five target international market segments to do so. 
And through specific outreach efforts, we were prepared to host an international travel trade show event in December of 2021, Travel South International, which I'd like to say has been pushed back to December 2022. We'll still host it, but a little bit delayed. And working closely with Visit Kentucky and our partners across the state, we were poised to launch onto the world stage like never before. The U.S. National Travel and Tourism Office predicted the U.S. would welcome more than 90.8 million international visitors by 2024. And for Kentucky in 2018, we welcomed 383,000 international guests. And our predictions forecasted to grow that number by 18% over the next five years. In Louisville, international visitors made up of about 3% of our overall 19 million annual visitors. So I think I can safely say many of us in the industry went into 2020 with our sights set high and then March happened. <laughs> and now fast forward to present day. And to give you an idea of what our industry in Louisville represents, tourism is the third largest employer in our state. And in March, as conventions and events canceled and hotels and attractions closed and many restaurants shuttered, it resulted in the industry having to furlough nearly 75% of its workforce. And on a national scale, when you take this up, how COVID affected travel is unimaginable. And I'm sure Christian can share inter internationally and globally as well. According to the United States Travel Association, leisure travelers accounted for almost 80% of all US domestic travel in 2018. And that was an increase of over 2% from the previous year. This means four out of five domestic trips were taken for leisure purposes and producing $762 billion in economic spending. And that was a 6.1% increase over 2017. So as you can see, COVID has devastated our industry by more than any other sector in the economy. Nearly 40% of all lost jobs nationwide were in the leisure segment, and travel spending was down nearly $500 billion in 2020. To use the word that many of us, I'm sure, would like to expel from our vocabulary is we have had to pivot and pivot fast. Like many organizations, our business's livelihood was rooted in face-to-face -face meetings. Meetings matter. In-person engagement matter. And how was, that was how we got business done. And for those of us in the industry veterans who consider this field of work family, as do I, we were cut off from the ones we love dearly. And like many of my colleagues, I call them my coworkers, my family. We are tourism strong and hospitality strong. And the work we can accomplish is because we have long lasting trusted business relationships that we have forged over the years. So while we quickly adopted the Zoom culture, like everyone else, we quickly recognized the one thing you can't do via Zoom is take a vacation. To travel is a deposit into your emotional bank account. And through those experiences, they connect us to a place and a time to the people we love. You can't parlay the smell of the intoxicating oak barrels in a Rick house through a Zoom call or the sound of 180,000 people cheering on 20 thoroughbred horses as they race around a mile long track for about 35 miles per hour. It just doesn't translate via Zoom. So we recognize the importance of travel and it will come back. So now that I've made you all want to get up and leave your computer screens and go out and experience the world and venture and see out, we want to talk about some of the other authentic uh, things that have happened and some positives that have come through the uh, pandemic. And what we're seeing as we're looking ahead, Destination Analysts is a research firm that we rely um, throughout this entire endeavor to really drive our, our, um, our next business decisions. They have been closely monitoring the pulse of travel since day one and providing insightful findings to the travel and tourism industry to base our strategies and activations on. And according to their most recent survey, they've conducted traveler sentiment is, is high and people do plan to book travel and travel uh, indicators seem to be hinting towards a growth pattern towards the later part of the year. And while we are still seeing some trepidation in the survey responses for traveling, that number has been steadily declining in the past few months as vacation numbers continue to, excuse me, as vaccination numbers continue to rise and warmer temperatures on their way with the exception of this week, of course, Louisville Tourism is responding to how we, how we get back to those travelers with a campaign that we have just now launched and started. It is our comeback campaign. And we are relying on this type of research and information to help guide our strategies and approach for how we wisely best spend our dollars available to us. What we do know now in this new normal, another phrase I would like to retire, is that travelers and what they're expecting is changing though. 
Many of the search and bookings we're noticing for 2021 are driven by the ongoing pandemic and those effects. Because COVID-19 has transformed the way we live and work and play, we're observing more travelers looking for responsible and safe ways and our desire to explore is a little bit more limited than maybe what they were used to. And we're seeing an increase in last minute bookings and an emphasis on more rural, quieter destinations. So no surprise there. But never more than ever do we expect the pent up demand will recover and rebound quickly. And moving into the third and fourth quarter with temperatures warming and more events able to happen and vaccinations on the rise, we do anticipate travel will return. And turning back to where we started, what does this mean for international travel? Well, and our representations in the UK and are sharing with us that they are seeing bookings tick up. This all though is driven by several different factors. Um, is the uncertainty around border openings and air service returning and what the requirements will be for inbound travelers is really the driving factor behind when we will start to see international visitation return. So we will come out of this pandemic with a lot of changes. We have certainly had to drastically change how we conduct business and, and business through our virtual platforms. We've had to find creative and alternative ways to present travel and the means that also entices people to book, but also while keeping in mind visitors health and safety is our number one priority and supporting our industry partners any way we can. But through all this, there is one point of the silver lining and that will not change in a pandemic, is the relationships that we have built through this industry and that will carry on. And when we see our friends in person again, nothing will have been lost, and, but the strength we will have gained as a workforce will all come together. And I can't wait for that day. We like to joke about it in our industry. We don't necessarily shake hands, we're huggers. And so I know the first time we're able to all get together, it'll be one big uh, family gathering, family reunion. So with that, Andy, that's the conclusion of our update from Mobile Tourism and can't wait to hear questions and open up the conversation. Thank you so much. That was so uplifting and heartwarming and um, definitely makes me want to travel again. Um, so thank you for that. And we will move into um, just a panel discussion. We had a couple people pre-submit questions and then I noticed that we're already getting um, some Q&A in the chat as well. Um, so I guess I'll kick it off with some of the pre-submitted questions and then we'll go ahead and transition into the questions that were asked live. Um, so you all have already talked about some of the like struggles of um, tourism during the pandemic and coping with pandemic restrictions. Have there been any attractions in either of your communities um, that have really been pandemic proof in some ways or that have been really able to um, weather the transitions that we've endured over the past year? I can jump on that one first. Um, sure. when, when the pandemic hit, you know, I, I think we, we can't say anything is pandemic proof. You know, they have all uh, suffered in one way or another and have had to um, make accommodations to still try to keep their doors open and, and keep welcoming guests, guests and visitors. Um, but one thing I will say that I was really proud to see, and it, it kind of goes back to the relationship piece, that when this happened, our industry really leaned on each other to provide um, best practices and support one another with information sharing to keep their doors open and provide a good positive experience for their guests and visitors. And so we had formed nine task force in different industry segments in the travel and tourism industry that met regularly and, and conducted conversations just around are you taking temperature checks? Are you requiring masks? Are you limiting capacities? Because this was all so new to everybody, you know, and not knowing the answers, you couldn't Google it and find, you know, what you needed to do. Um, they really leaned in and leaned on each other to provide and share best practices for how they could continue to keep their doors open and welcome guests safely. Um, so that was really something. And I know they've continued to meet and, and, and love those conversations as this has just been an ever-changing situation. Well, from an Austrian perspective, um, we had severe um, negative effects, of course, in the big cities where we have, you know, like the fair tourism, international tourism, the big attractions, where you have like all the concerts and, and where it's not just individual tourism, but generally speaking, where you have um, the, 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 the huge attractions that have been closed due, due to the pandemic, but then also um, due to the fact that we had closed borders for 
more than six months in Austria last year. And now we have still closed borders. Um, lockdown three has been just reopened a little bit this week on Monday. So kids are allowed to go to school. Um, we are allowed to go shopping again, more or less, but the, the whole uh, gastronomic area, hotels and everything is still closed. So um, we have um, had the issue that the third lockdown now started on the 1st of November. So we have been closed now in more than three months. And all the our um, touristic attractions, the hotels, and of course the gastronomy, uh, the restaurants are still closed. So uh, we focus here now on the summer season. What happened in 2020 was, um, like um, Jessica said, is we also introduced with the Chamber of Commerce a safety tourism concept. So there was already testing, you know, like weekly testing to avoid clusters. Therefore, everybody choose. Um, uh, holidays at home, like within the country, or what, like making, you know, like trips to um, Italy, France, um, uh, Croatia, or anywhere else, because the safety concepts were well, well um, appreciated um, internationally, because we actually introduced a concept where the entrepreneurs and the employees were tested regularly, even guests could get tests for free. So then the focus on sustainable and let's call it sustainable tourism, slow food, I mean, hiking, everybody wanted to be in the mountains, you know, away from the rural areas where social distancing is easy, enjoying um, their um, individual travel, going by your own car on the one hand side or going uh, with the train. And that made it easy for us to access at least the Austrians and uh, cross-border, um, uh, especially German tourists and tourists from the Netherlands, because it was easy for them to actually access Austria. And with those sustainable projects, um, I mean, we had a very good summer season between that started in the end of June. Um, and with the opening of the borders, uh, we had a very um, excellent, um, in the rural areas of Austria, we had an excellent tourism. So the concept was safety, quality, quality food, because what we saw in the pandemic, what came up in Austria is, where do you actually buy? Who is your supplier? Everybody wanted to know, um, hey, which farm is your supplier for your food, for your chicken? Where do you get your vegetable from? And that combined, you know, that we had already a lot of tourist projects that focused on that with the slow food area. And then on the other hand, with regional suppliers, due to the lack, lack of um, information before, that became a total trend. And that, that helped us to survive the summer season. Excellent. Um, thank you so much. And then pivoting just a little bit, um, this is a pre-submitted question and then we'll incorporate one of the uh, questions that an audience member just asked. Are there any key decision-making factors um, that you account for with reopening? So would it be like a certain benchmark of vaccinations or um, just a general like benchmark of, of safety if the government said something? And then um, Judge Bissig, who is um, a wonderful uh, member of our organization, she just asked in the chat, how is the vaccination rollout going, uh, particularly in Europe? Uh, when do the panelists anticipate tourists will be allowed to return? Um, would this look different in both locations? And then would it be in fall of this year or as far out as 2022? So I know that's quite a few questions, um, but take it as you will. Um, shall I start, Jessica? Sure, go ahead. Yeah. Well, in terms of, uh, I mean, um, I have worked now for more than um, nine months with the government, and we have a lack of leadership in Austria right now. So, uh, due to the fact that the lockdown has not been, you know, like following a strict rule with key success factors, when do we open? When do we close? It's strictly. Yeah, no, no, they introduced something that was called a Corona traffic um, light. I mean, no one is looking at the traffic light anymore because it, 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 it's just, you know, a thump guess. And that's what makes it so complicated because people need security and especially entrepreneurs, you know, you can support them with money, which is the, the we have great support. And we ha may have much more support in terms of money than other countries. We are leader in Europe on how much money and funds our entrepreneurs get. But what entrepreneurs are missing is, you know, like, do we have any, any guidelines when we will reopen? 
and that's that's something that that has no uh, so far there is no strategic plan on that we are totally focusing on summer that's what the chamber of commerce in austria lobbies on because we say okay we started with uh, the vaccination process but the european union is generally not well organized so the process of the different types of vaccines until they you know they have to run through a certain process that has to be allowed by the european union then the member uh, uh, countries can actually um um, uh, rely on that and then they they uh, ordered uh, not enough vaccine now we have a, a completely backlay in in all the countries in austria right now we have a population of nearly 9 million people and i guess 250,000 people have received their vaccine uh, so far so it's very little the plan was that until june younger people than me will receive the vaccine we don't even know how that will you know turn out. So, so far, uh, there is a lack of a, a, a national strategy on that. Uh, generally, um, we plan to reopen at least um, the gastronomic facilities after Easter. That's the plan so far. Um, but this is just a sum guess because no one really knows what we will rely on. But for sure, what I'm, I'm uh, um, at least within the country, tourism will be possible in summer. That's for sure, because um, um, although we don't open up the borders, um, we heavily rely on our tourism um, with, within uh, Austria. And of course, I'm sure that will be an agreement with our German neighbors. That happened also last year, and I guess that with uh, spring season coming up and then hop hopefully dropping of, of, of uh, incidents and, and, and numbers, um, we totally focus on reopening, um, at least in, in the tourism area, uh, by the end of June, beginning of July. I can talk a little bit about um, Louisville. Um, as probably many on the call might already know, you know, we, we we're open, um, you know, we have had, our hotels have been operating and our attractions have been operating, albeit, you know, at maybe reduced um, capacities, which are really driven large in part by the kind of coming down from recommendations from the governor's office. Um, and so that really kind of drives the capacities of what many of our attractions are able to do. So um, I know they rely heavily on those uh, updates to be able to build their business around. Um, you know, and I guess in terms of how we have seen travel, you know, we're hearing reports from our hoteliers that we're occupy our occupancy levels right now are about 30, 35%. Um, so we are still seeing people coming in and, you know, we are also happy to report that um, looking ahead from a, um, typically we, we kind of would classify them as meeting and conventions, but it's really large in part be a lot of sporting groups that are coming into Louisville. Um, over the next couple of months, we have about 40,000 room nights booked uh, in relation to some different sporting events and um, uh, dance performances and uh, volleyball tournaments and, and a large, large part of those groups are still traveling. So we're really happy to see those groups returning. Uh, we're happy to see that our leisure guests are still visiting. Um, and we expect that number to, to slowly and steadily climb as again with the warming temperatures and with vaccination rates going up. Um, like you, Christiane, you know, our vaccination rollout is really different state by state. Um, and so I know our state is looking to kind of take the lead on getting our educators vaccinated first, because I think they really see the value in getting the students back to school and what that really means for the business community. Um, so, you know, we'll be just sitting patiently waiting for when it'll be our turn too. But, Awesome. Thank you. Do we answer all the questions? I was trying to keep track of what, what we did. Yeah, I, I just wanted to ask the same thing. Thank yes, you. Yes, I think so. So it's basically you all both covered vaccine rollout um, and then when you think things might return to normal. Um, yes, if you wanted to discuss that a, a bit more, but I think at this point, as we've talked about, it's sort of, you know, anyone's guess. I kind of um, described it yesterday. It's, it's like a big ship turning. You know the turns coming it's just gonna be really slow you know we're, we're seeing small glimmers of uh returning so it's it'll be a slow rise up absolutely and um it looks like we have another question in the chat so do you do you see anything within your industry 
um, the, during the pandemic that will likely continue when we go back to in-person um, and when tourism returns, as you were discussing the new normal, I'm not sure about that phrasing, um, but are there any lasting changes that you see for your industry um, based on what things you've implemented during the pandemic? I have a funny one on that, that I will probably continue going forward. I haven't had a head cold by now. And by all the trips we usually travel, you know, winter is our real big travel season to travel trade shows. We're on airlines, we're on, you know, planes and busy places. I will probably continue the, the mask trend even long, 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 long after the, uh, the pandemic subsides, because I'm kind of liking this, this winter health kick uh, that I'm on. But, um, you know, no, I think really, um, one thing I would see would continue for our organization is, you know, we had never really utilized uh, these, you know, virtual platforms like we had in the past. And I think while we are all eager to get back to in-person events and trade shows and conferences and uh, meetings, you know, we really do see how we can leverage these digital platforms to have a broader reach to a bigger audience segment um, that we may not have perhaps had once before. And that remains even particularly of um, priority given, you know, we're all, all gonna be starting to re recover in our budgets. And, and as you know, we have had significant cuts in, in budgets, um, utilizing those platforms to be able to still have an impact and have a reach will be a lasting legacy from COVID that I, you know, I think we're all very much um, ready to take on. Um, I've seen a lot of new trends evolving last year that I think that will last in tourism because um, we had 10, you know, like from the crisis 2008, 2009 and that hit um, the United States as much as it, did, it hit in, in, in Austria. But the last 10 years, we had really, really, really good years. Yeah, you know, we're very successful entrepreneurs, um, you know, like uh, bigger, better, higher status everywhere, money coming uh, in, no one really, I mean, reinvested because they didn't have to. And then the pandemic hit. And, and what I saw is that people on the one hand side focused much more on digitalization, how to use digitalization in, in tourism, how to handle your processes, digital, you know, they got their homework done. That first kicked into the first lockdown. We had that for six weeks. They prepared a lot for the summer season. And then the last fall, you know, they even, you know, they thought about, you know, what do we need to, um, uh, what, what do we need to focus on? And we have a lot in tourism, a lot of investments in new strategies, houses, you know, like um, the, the lockdown now lasts for more than three months. So they actually you know, like made new plans for what can we do to make ourselves, our houses much more attractive. So things that didn't hit in the last 10 years, they did it because now they have the time because they are at home. So that's one thing. Then the topic mobility. We introduced last year due to the fact that planes were not well um, uh, equipped and used um, the mobi a new mobility project in Austria, which is called, you know, like the, um, uh, the individual individualism in tourism so you use uh, your train and we organize um, the last mile for you so wherever your train hits um, we organize that you uh, will be picked up and you are brought to your hotel so that that kicked in totally and we see that with all the studies and questionnaires that we send out that the younger generation likes that a lot because a lot of them don't have their own car anymore and uh, they are very aware of the sustainability aspect and climate change aspect and we attracted a very young generation that doesn't even have a, has a driver license anymore, you know, due to the fact that in Austria, everything is, is smaller and very well equipped with the train. Um, that is something that, um, um, that kicked in totally and we will reinforce that. Another topic is the, the quality topic and the new work models, because what we also found out is um, reshaping the back from the 24 seven availability. You know, we focused much more on quality and also we introduced new workflow models. So less days, but more hours. So mm -hmm. as a young individual in working in tourism, you had to be available more or less 24 seven, 24 seven. And then we found out that we make the workplace much more attractive for high potential uh, workforce. If we reduce the days, and increase the hours. So they work for four or five days, but have two or three days off. 
And these attractive models um, saved us in the very busy summer season, but that has been really, really, um, uh, um, uh, in, uh, we, we got a really good feedback through those no, new work uh, models. And I think we will keep that also in regions that are um, not that at attractive to go to work for. So, and then, and, and the last topic is of course, the combination slow food tourism, products, farming, um, and then slow food area um, to focus on that because the awareness of every generation, at least in Austria, I see that a lot of, uh, to focus on where the, do your products come from, to consume less, but to consume much more quality. Uh, that is something we will have as a take and what we will be focusing on uh, much more in also in the future. That's excellent. Um, and yeah, we were just remarking in the chat. Uh, it's wonderful that even tourism can incorporate some remote work because I know that that's going to be um, a continued mainstay for so many sectors. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess one last question that was put in the chat and then we'll see if any other um, come in was, is there any possibility of a tourism exchange between Austria and Louisville? Uh, it seems like there are a lot of commonalities for both our regions. And um, I know that we love hosting our international visitors from all over Europe, especially Austria. But um, I don't know if you guys wanted to touch on that or maybe explore that in the future. Um, I think that we would be very amenable if incorporating World Affairs Council as well. Um, but. Uh -huh. I, I, I totally say yes. That was already <laughs> something that I picked up. You know, I was, I, I mean, to me, I, I was like the ambassador of Louisville when I came back. <laughs> Not only because of the Kentucky Derby. You know, I was a professional horse rider when I was uh, uh, even younger. Um, so uh, coming to Louisville and learn that much about the Derby and then the fabulous hats, you know, the fashion industry. You know, I, I, was, uh, I was so impressed with so many things and I learned a lot. And, and, you know, compared to other cities, Louisville is a very small city, I mean, in the United States. So um, you, you get around easily. And for Europeans, it's, it's, it's not like you're not overwhelmed by these huge cities. So, um, you know, like any kind of um, exchange um, makes a lot of sense. And in terms of what I learned is the Burbison industry combined it with good food. That is so not US American, you know, what I learned there all these very nice restaurants, the Nulu area. I mean, it felt like, you know, like walking around in France and that, you know, that that is not communicated at all to Europe. And that's what I think a lot of people would like when to, to, to hear about and, and that would attract them um, to uh, maybe think about Louisville as a holiday destination. I, I'm all in and, and any, <laughs> Um, you know, as I mentioned, our, our top five international markets kind of prior to COVID really, you know, we kind of classify just Europe is, is in one and then it breaks down further beyond that. But, um, you know, we have had made, you know, strides in our outreach into the European markets and, and reaching new uh, visitors. Um, but there's just so much more opportunity and potential. And I think that's why when we were um, planning for this 2020 year and, and to have all this happened, you know, we had so many great uh, plans for outreach that I know we're going to just pick right back up when, when we're able to do so. And um, working closely with Christiane and, and, and Austria Exchange would be at the top of my list. Well, that is so excellent to hear. And um, thank you, Christiane, for bragging so much on so many wonderful aspects of our city. No, I don't have to say a thing. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, absolutely. Um, well, I guess just to conclude, I have one final question for you all. This is just sort of a fun question. Um, but is there any one particular event or attraction um, that you are most looking forward to reopening when uh, tourism resumes? Uh, in, in, in my country or in your country, like an attraction that I would want to visit in Louisville or? Oh, uh, I mean, you could take it that way. I was thinking for your own home communities, but we would love to have you back in Louisville if you'd like to come visit again. So. Well, well, last year, I mean, um, to be to be honest, when I when you know, like when I like one year ago, we didn't know about the pandemic. You know, um, there was a little bit of glimpse already, but 
I left the United States on the 15th of February and flew back beginning of March. And actually, I was on the last flight from Denver when President Trump uh, closed the border. So I was on the last flight from Denver. Uh, and I arrived, the lockdown in Austria started on the 16th. Four days before, on Wednesday, President Trump said on a national TV that they will close the borders on Friday. And I catch the last flight Friday evening from Denver to Frankfurt. So um, back in Louisville in February, not knowing about the pandemic, I actually said, okay, I have to return in May to actually uh, join the Derby because that would be really cool because if the city is already cool when it's cold outside, uh, how imagine, I mean, how, how uh, cool it must be, you know? So that, that would be something that is definitely now on my bucket list, uh, on the very, very top on my bucket list when it's um, safe to travel again. Generally in Austria, I mean, I'm, I'm a not, not a social distancing person at all. Uh, so I really suffer since months. Um, so it doesn't matter which event, it's just, you know, for me, it's just any reopening will be a party day or maybe a party weekend or maybe even a party week. So I don't care about the, the, the place, it's just about the people. I want to see people again. And um, um, yeah, that's, um, um, you know, it's the, the very small things right now after a very long uh, year. For, for me, for a little while, when we were talking about Derby, you know, that's a, a, a big one that we all look forward to, you know, now, like it's like this week, they just released the, the Derby poster, you know, it's like you start to feel the, the buildup and all that kind of excitement leading up to it. Um, but I would say the other thing I'm really looking forward to is Louisville has such a great music and kind of festival scene, you know, so like Waterfront Wednesdays, which are just these free outdoor concerts, you know, on the river, have a glass of wine, bring some snacks, you know, it's open air, you can just walk around. Just, I miss those kind of events, just being out, hearing great, you know, music, being around people, um, springtime, you know, can be just, the weather can be amazing. So that's what I'm looking forward to. I'm tired of grocery shopping, I'm tired of cooking, and I'm tired of cleaning <laughs> my kitchen. So I also will, like Christiane, probably eat out for an entire week when, you know, it's just, can go right there. Um, but yeah, it, it's, um, you know, I think we're all ready. It, it's going to be the, someone said it's going to be the summer of love <laughs> to get out, so. Absolutely. And when you showed the picture of Waterfront Park and Big Four Bridge, I immediately, my mind went straight to Waterfront Wednesday uh, and like seeing all the live music. Well, thank you all both so much for your time. Um, it was just delightful to hear from you and have this conversation. Um, thank you so much for coming back virtually to Louisville, Christian. Um, always happy to have you. And um, yes, for our visitors that are still on the call, if you'd like to learn more about our upcoming programs, please check us out at worldkentucky.org um, and follow us there to learn more about all of our upcoming events. Thank you and have a wonderful day. Thank you, Thank you all. Guys. Bye.